Okay, so we, we can tell that to Router1's loopback interface. Now let's try this. We're going to shut down the interface between Router1 and 3. Count T, int fast, 0, 01, shut. Alright, so that thing's gone. And we could do a quick show IP int PR to verify. Okay, fast Ethernet 0, 01 is down and down. If we go to Router1, we'll see that the link should also be down. Show IP int PR. Fast01. Okay, so here we see that Fast01 on router one side is up and up, and that's because what we've done is the cable's still connected to router one, and obviously router three. Well, it's a virtual cable, and we've set, shut down one side, the other side still thinks it's up. It's up. Okay, but in effect, what this is doing is uh, we've disconnected the link between the two the two routers. Okay, so let's verify. Or actually, let's do this. Go on router 1. We'll also shut down this side. So int fast 01, shut it down. And now both sides are shut down. Go back on router 3. So in this case, it's basically the same as if we had cut this cable or we pulled the cable out from both sides. Go on router 3. We'll try to telnet to 1.1.1.1. Let's see if we can make it. And we can still make it, right? What's the reason? Well, there's two reasons. Since this is a virtual interface, it's always going to be up. And we still have a path through it going from router 3 to router 2 to router 1. Okay? So that's one of the big reasons that we do loopback interfaces. They're always going to be up. They're always going to be reachable as long as we have a link to them. So... I'll quickly show you something with OSPF and you'll also see it in later more advanced videos of why we need a loopback address. Oops. Go back to router 1. We're just going to quickly start up router OSPF. Give it a process number, router OSPF 1, and throw everything into area zero. Okay. Whoops. And give it a wildcard mask area zero. There we go. So after we start up OSPF we're going to do a show IP protocols. And you can see here that OSPF and RIP are currently running. And you can see here the router ID. This is going to be very important as you learn OSPF, uh, RIP, BGP, well not RIP, but uh, EIGP, BGP, any of the more advanced protocols, they're going to want a router ID. And your router ID is going to be your highest loopback interface, if you have a loopback, which you should. All right. So here, our loopback interface is 1.1.1.1. That makes our router ID 1.1.1.1. So this is going to identify the origin of the routes. And it's going to sort of tag them and, and basically say, these routes came from this router. If you didn't have a loopback interface, then your router ID would have been the highest IP address on your physical interfaces. And in this case, it would have probably been, it well, definitely would have been 101131. Because dot 13 is higher than dot 12. Right? So that's another reason why you have a loopback interface. It is to signify or to help signify your router ID in dynamic routing protocols. Okay, so just go, a quick recap. Loopback interfaces, they're fake interfaces. They're used a lot in routing protocols and administration. It's pretty easy to create them. You just do int loopback and give it a number, and then you could give it an IP address. Uh, oh, I also forgot. Another reason we use loopbacks is for practice. They represent a network and it's sort of like a, a fake network out there. So what we're assuming here is with 1.1.1.1 is we are faking that we have a network 1.1.1.0 slash 24. So it's as if we had connected another fast Ethernet cable out here and there's a whole bunch of computers behind that, you know, connected to a hub or a, a switch. 
So that's another reason why we use loopback interfaces. Well, that's another Router Guides video. Thank you very much for watching.